Gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield two and a half minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Stubbe. Gentleman is recognized two and a half minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise in opposition to H.R. 8. This legislation claims to be a solution to gun violence, yet does nothing to actually solve the real problems that contribute to this crisis. As it stands now, this legislation does nothing to make our schools, churches, or communities safer. In fact, it only infringes on the constitutionally guaranteed Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens, something I cannot support. This bill will criminalize the private transfer of firearms and will make exercising basic constitutional rights impossibly expensive for millions of law-abiding Americans. Not to mention, it is essentially unenforceable without a national gun registry. But let's be honest, that's where my colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to end up, registering firearms so they can systematically take them away. We must stop our nation from falling down this slippery slope. I think we can all agree that something needs to be done to stop the illegal ownership and misuse of firearms, but H.R. 8 is not the answer. The, this legislation would have done nothing to prevent many of the prominent tragedies that occurred in my home state of Florida. The shooter at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland passed a background check. The shooter at Pulse Nightclub in Orlando passed a background check. And just weeks ago, a man who murdered five women in my district passed a background check. H.R. 8 would have done nothing to stop these violence acts, just like the previous attempts to require universal background checks have done nothing to prevent actual crimes. If Democrats were serious about gun violence, they would have voted for my amendment. I filed an amendment in committee that would have required law enforcement to be notified upon the attempt of someone to purchase a firearm and fail a background check. Law enforcement would have been notified. But instead of supporting policies that curtail legal possession of firearms, the Democrats on both the Judiciary and Rules Committee rejected my proposal. How is that unreasonable? I stand for the Constitution, I stand for freedom, and I stand for the Second Amendment. And that's why I'm not, I'm not voting for this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman reserves.